this coming year, what I wanted to do, periodically, I think I want to do it once every six weeks, is I'm going to take a different couple who's involved with some type of leadership here at the church. I'm going to have them share their testimonies. It had uh, really dawned on me towards the end of last year that there were so many people sitting there <coughs> wondering, well, how did they get there? How did these people who are up in front get there? What motivated them to do that? And, you know, they, they didn't just go from sitting in the chair to up here. What, what happened? Well, in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, it says, Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein? And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. You know, a lot of times when we're as parents trying to talk to our kids uh, about teenage years, they look at us like, You don't know nothing about teenage years. Another thing we're going to do this coming year, we're going to take pictures of all of us when we were teenagers. We're going to put them up on PowerPoint. <laughs> and the young people have to guess who we are. <laughs> At one time, I want you guys, young people know we all had hair. Yes! <laughs> and ones who had gray hair had long blonde hair. And long black hair, or brunette hair, or red hair. We weren't always old. <laughs> so this coming year, I want you to see just right. how God takes people's lives and turns it around, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to take your Bible now one more time. It's the first Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, i got to give you two scriptures. I lied, okay? Go to Job chapter 22 and verse 21. Job 22, 21. Now, how many of you really know Pastor Shane and Mindy? Yeah, well, these ones might, <laughs> but guess what? You really don't know them. I know. Kids, you really don't know your parents. <laughs> Zach, oh. Nicole, you really don't know them. My children don't really know me unless I tell them what got me from the chair up to the front and why I'm doing what I'm doing. They really don't know me. They know maybe their grandparents. They know our parents. Uh, where we came from, but they really don't know me. What happened? So in Job chapter 22, there's a verse there. And God is saying to us, Acquaint now thyself with him. This is for 2015. Acquaint now thyself with him. That means with God. And be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Job 22, 21. How many of you want good to come here this year? Amen. Then you've got to get acquainted with them. Yep. And that's what we were talking about last week. Okay, you've got to know the Word of God. You've got to get acquainted with them. You've got to know them. Now, let's go to 1 Thessalonians, and then I'm out of here this morning. Everybody say amen for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see Michael afterwards, all right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Get acquainted with them. Know them. Know the different people in your church that are doing different things and what motivates them to do what they're doing. You can't do that unless you spend some time to talk to people. you got to talk to them. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourself. That's the same as thereby good shall come out of you. If you want good things to come, you've got to get acquainted with people. And then you've got to know why we do what we do here at this church. Amen. And what motivated us, what got us to where we are in life. And so I asked Pastor Shane and Minnie if they would share this morning their testimony. What got them to this spot in their life? Amen. So welcome them as they come. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just very quickly before uh, we get started, I just wanted to let you know about the small groups that will be starting next Sunday. Uh, our uh, Winter quarter for Living Word on the Go small groups begins next Sunday evening, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, every other Sunday, uh, starting next Sunday, 
Uh, the first class is going to be Agents of the Apocalypse. That's going to be taught by Wyatt Hood. Uh, and it's, it's a video series by David Jeremiah. Uh, some of the men you've already seen, some of them at the Men's Breakfast. A very good series. Don't miss it. Don't miss it, yeah. Amen. Very, very good. About Revelation, about the end times, prophecies, those types of things. Very, very interesting. Uh, and I encourage you to be a part of that. Now, the second one is First John for Ladies. Okay, that's uh, the theme of that is life evaluation, going through the book of First John. Uh, my lovely wife, Mindy, will be uh, teaching that. That's going to be in the fellowship hall. And uh, the third one is the second part of You Just Got School. There's the book of James. Uh, we're going to be taking up the last three chapters of James. That's going to meet upstairs in the loft. Uh, we had a wonderful time, the first part Amen. of James, if you were a part of that. Uh, Amen. Just a lot of, lot of stuff in there. We didn't even really go through the whole first three chapters. It's, there's just so much information, but we're going to uh, tackle four, five, and six for this next time. And uh, if you haven't been part of a small group, I encourage you to do that. Uh, it's not only the instruction and the material that we're going through that's the important part. The important part is the fellowship, getting to know some people in the church, just like Pastor was talking about. You can't really get to know everybody on a Sunday morning you know, when everybody's here at the same time. But when it's a small group and you can get to know each other, you can uh, ask questions, you can share about your own life, you can pray with one another. That's so important. Uh, and just like what we're going to do here this morning. It's so important for you. So be a part of that if you can. And we just encourage that. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, ladies first. My wife is going to go first. We're not going to TMI you this morning, give you too much information. But uh, if you've got two hours, we're going to each share an hour. And then we'll be done. Here we go. Yeah, I was going to say, don't laugh. I could probably do that. Talk for an hour. She could. Um, some of you heard our testimony, I think, when we first came about four years ago. We um, spoke a little bit. But I wanted to start out with this scripture. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, In whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Mm -hmm. That was me. The enemy had blinded me. Um, I did not grow up in church. I did not have parents who attended church. Um, possibly my grandfather had went to church when, um, before I was born because I might have heard something here and there about that. But pretty much, um, I grew up in a divorced family with a single mother who worked at Ford, and she was in a duplex next to an aunt who was also divorced, who had eight children, and my mother had three children. Um, for the most part, I saw my cousins who lived next door to me. They were quite a bit, not quite a bit, but the oldest one was quite a bit older than me, and then the youngest was just a few years older than me. Five were girls and three were boys. Um, I saw all three of the boys go to juvenile once or twice. I saw the girls all pregnant before they got married, except one. And I was invited to cousins' baby showers when I was probably 12, 13. Wow. Um, and so this was my world. This is what I saw. Broken families and unwed mothers and juvenile boys. <laughs> so that's how I grew up. But for some reason, I, I credit God now because I think um, he had his hand on me from the very beginning. Amen. Yes. I believe that. Yeah. If I cry, it's because I'm just emotional. Um, <laughs> sometimes I do that. <laughs> but um, I think he had his hand on me because there was something in me from the beginning where I didn't want to be bad. I didn't want to be like my cousins. Yeah. I didn't want to be like that. I wanted something better. Um, actually, I didn't even want to be like my mother who worked in the factory. I wanted something better. So um, I was good in school, for what I know is good. I tried to be good. I played three sports a year. I stayed out of trouble. Um, I got good grades, and I tried, you know, I took help with my brother and sister when my mom was working and tried to be a good person. And the whole time I kept thinking, it's going to get me ahead. It's going to get me somewhere. Being better is, is going to get me somewhere. And so my senior year... I was starting a championship basketball team in my high school. I went to East Detroit High School. And um, I pulled two groin muscles. I don't know if you ever played ball, but to pull two groin muscles was kind of painful. And um, what happened, that moment changed my life because there was a 10th grader, big girl, who could play ball, and boy, she just snuck into that starting position. And that kind of ruined me because I thought, oh, you know, sports was my life. If you're a sports person, that's what you do. So I didn't even stay on the team. I quit, which was really common for me. But I quit, and I started hanging around with different people. And um, here comes the truth. 
for, for about a year, I graduated high school, and for about a year, um, I just did bad stuff. I started to go to Macomb, but you know who I saw in Macomb? I saw all the, I saw all the girls who slept around in my school. I saw all the kids who um, smoked weed, drank booze, party. They were all at the same college I went, was doing the same thing. So in my mind, being good didn't get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you know why? I realize now, where is it? I'm going to share it with you. In Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. Yeah, that's right. I didn't know that, but I couldn't be good. <laughs> You know, I couldn't be good. And I had tried, and then being good just led me to the same place where all the kids who were not good. So I thought, wow, I missed out. I tried to be good, and it didn't do me any, any you know, benefit. So for my first year of college, I dropped out of a poem college, and I was just bad. <coughs> I did all the things I thought I missed out on. You know, and I thought it was fun at the time. And um, I hung around with a friend. Like Shane said, we won't give you too much information. There was a point where my kids asked me a question, and I told them, yeah, Mom did that. My oldest son was 12, and he's a very, he's a very like, lying person. You know, when his sister got her ears pierced, she was like four, and he was, what is that, 10? He was very upset with us. He thought we were making my daughter sin, because Scripture said not to pierce your ears. So he's, he's really like that kind of, you know, uh, legal... So he, yeah, he was kind of upset. So when he found out some of the things I did before I became a Christian, um, he literally looked at me and said, Mom, wow, you're, you're a pig. <laughs> you know, and that hurt me as a mom. That was terrible. But you know what? He was right. You know? You, he was right. I was, I was rolling around in the mud before I was a Christian. I was. I was downright dirty and nasty pig. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> And that was before Shane met me, so thank God, too. Uh, but, um, yeah, I did all the things my friends did and people did that I thought I, I had saved myself from. And um, it was about a year. And then um, this is what happened. God intervened. Um, I was hanging around with a person that I went to high school with, and his family was a family of believers. They were Catholics who had become believers, and they went to St. Clair Shores Assembly. Pat, Pat went there the same time I went there. I was in the youth group with their children. Um, we went to his house, his name was Mark, and I was picking him up for the bar. That's where we were going, to the bar to drink and dance and party. And um, I got to his house and he said, Mindy, my mom is having people over from church and I can't leave. Please stay. We'll just go to the bar after. Please stay. And I said, I'm not staying here with church people. I mean, I didn't know anything about church people. It was very weird. He said, come on, come on. So he conned me into staying and um, I sat through their little cell group as we call them now and um, then they got up to pray they had a little acoustic guitar played some music they got up to pray and we all got in a circle and held hands and I remember this they had a sofa couch over here and I don't know if y'all remember the long mirrors that people would have above their sofa couch it was like the whole size of the couch it was long and we were holding hands and I was kind of like you know, looking around like, this is really weird. <laughs> Can't wait to get to the bar. <laughs> and uh, I uh, looked up and caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Mm. And the Holy Spirit just whooshed over me. And I just started to cry. I didn't like myself. <laughs> you know, I didn't like what I saw in the mirror, and I didn't like myself. Mm. And uh, in that moment, it was like God said, there is something better. Because, you know, I thought there was and I couldn't get there, obviously, because I can't get there on my own. And um, in that moment, I, was, I just knew, oh, there is something better. And, um, but I didn't, still didn't know because no one had really explained to me Christ. And so I kind of, as soon as they were done praying, you know, scooted off to the restroom. I was a little embarrassed. I was crying. And his, I didn't know half of those people. So his sister, who was about two years older than me, I knew her from high school, she came back there, and she sat me on her bed, and she, for the first time, was the first person um, who told me about Christ in a way that I understood that he loved me, that Jesus loved me, and that he died for me, and that he wanted better for me. And, you know, growing up with my cousins who did all these things, and my, I mean, my, my mother and my aunt and her oldest daughters, they would have their tea leaves read in my, in my kitchen. <clears throat> 
you know. Um, they would they would invite their little you know people over to do whatever they did, and uh, they didn't know any better either. You know, they're blind too. And um, so she came in and explained to me, and I and she prayed with me, and I accepted Christ. Mm. And um, then we went to the bar. <laughs> You know, I didn't know any better. I held a drink in my hand, <laughs> sat at the bar, and I told everybody who came by me, you know what I found out tonight? Jesus loves me. <laughs> I was excited. Something was changed in me. <clears throat> you know? And, and I was telling everybody at the bar that Jesus loved me. Um, and, and that was the beginning. You know, of course I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be at the bar getting drunk and partying, but I knew that, <laughs> that now somebody loved me. And... Um, you know, that night, that's all I did was walk around. The people there probably thought I was crazy. If you think back about it, you know, they're all like me, sinners, going to party. And here I am, drinking my drink. Jesus loves me. Do you know Jesus loves me? I'm so excited. I found that out tonight. I was, you know, the crazy person. But um, then, her name was Tracy, my friend's sister. She kept inviting me to church. At first, I didn't really want to go because, I mean, who does when you think church is strange? And um, she kept inviting me and she kept inviting me. And I just want to encourage you, if you know someone who just gave their heart to the Lord, they're not going to automatically be perfect. That's they're not right. going to automatically want to be in the house of the Lord. That's right. He's pointing at you. He must think you're still <laughs> a perfect person. He doesn't know. But so just give them patience. Give them some compassion and patience. And, you know, encourage them. If they say no this week, ask them again this next week. That's right. You know, they're not going to change overnight. Some of us, we forget. Yeah. And we think everybody, as soon as they say you know, they give their heart to the Lord. They should be us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're not going to be us. That's right. It took me, it took me a while. And, um, and according to my kids, it's still taking me time. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell. This morning, we got breakfast at McDonald's. <clears throat> they didn't give us a hash brown that we paid for and ordered. I like things done right. I don't know if you can tell my personality. <laughs> I'm hard on myself, so I think other people should be hard on themselves, too. <laughs> So I went around, and I cut three people that were paying off, got back at the window and beat. And I said, the lady came, and I was nice. I said, we didn't get a hash brown that you're supposed to give us. She kind of, you know, and she tells the other lady, they didn't get their hash brown. So she gives it to me, and then we pull off. Then my son, who I've raised correctly, thank God, <laughs> says, Mom, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Why are you so upset about a hash brown? Because it's just ridiculous that I should have to go back and get what I ordered and they didn't do their job correctly. Amen. That's right. <laughs> See, Bruce knows. <laughs> it's, it's in our personality, people. You know, and, uh, and he said, well, I'm sure you make mistakes. And I said, oh, so I was thinking, you know, oh, i got to get up in front of church and tell my testimony. <laughs> and here I am. So my today testimony is I'm still being worked on. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm still being worked on. I'm still uh, learning a little bit of compassion. And, but um, God did make me the way that he made me. Because when um, I got saved and I started attending St. Clair Shores Youth Group, their youth pastor was from Texas. And we went on a retreat, and we had private Bible time. And that's when the Lord called me to ministry. And uh, I had been, I'd only been a Christian about six months. And I was in private Bible time, and the Lord said, um, you're, you know, you're going to be in ministry. And I, said, and I said, God, I can't be in ministry. Um, I said, I have a big mouth, and I will offend everyone. <laughs> I really told him that. I said, all I know of pastor's wives, they sit in the front row, they're quiet, some of them play the piano, and some of them sing alto. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. See? It, it, that's it, a it, that's <laughs> and, uh, that's, and that's all I knew, and I thought, I can't do that. I'm not that quiet, and I don't play the piano, and I will offend people, because I speak my mind. And um, in clear as day, Honestly, this is what the Lord said to me. He said, that's the reason I picked you. Because when I control your mouth, I know you won't be ashamed or afraid to speak. Amen. Or not. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know? awesome. So um, that's another thing I still work on. Making sure before I speak that who's in charge of my mouth. Because <laughs> sometimes I still want to be in charge of it. But um, I try all the time to let him be in charge of it. Um, 
But then I realized, you know, there's not a certain type of person who does this or who does that or who does this. Um, God picks, the, you know, who's willing. Yes, and he picks who, who he has um, a plan for. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know. Am I taking too much time? I got three minutes. He's watching the clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So the, the way I ended up in ministry was I said yes to the Lord, and um, I went to Bible college. Um, my parents thought I was crazy. By then, my mother had married, and my stepdad raised me through about high school and junior high. And um, they thought I was crazy. My dad said to my mother, oh, it's just a phase. She'll be back. Let it go. She'll be back. And uh, I drove to, because of the youth pastors being from Texas at St. Clair Shores, I drove to uh, Waxahachie, Texas, and went to uh, Assembly of God. Southwestern Assembly God Bible College, and um, just began my new journey with the Lord, and learned things, and it was really good for me, because it separated me from friends and people, it was a whole different, you know, atmosphere, a whole different place, I'm not sure I would have grown as much if I stayed in the atmosphere that I was in, but God knew that, so he moved me, and, um, and even at Bible College, I found people who were there, but not really Christians. That's right. That's right. You know, um, I ran into people who put milk in my sour milk in my car as a practical joke. Oh, wow. um, there were homosexuals at my school. Um, there were people who just took Christianity for granted, or who just lived religious lives because they were raised in it, but never had any relationship with Christ. So it was a shock to me. Because I would walk around with my Bible, a new creature, totally excited about Christ, and they literally would make fun of me for carrying my Bible around a Bible campus. <laughs> um, you know? But it's because they weren't really having a relationship with Christ. That's right, that's right. So um, I learned that right away, and that was helpful because then all the churches that Shane and I have been in, um, we have moved quite often and been in a lot of churches, we've even run across pastors who were being put in jail for molesting children um, and other things that it's not necessary to say, but you know, but I realized from before the things I have learned was because it was the relationship with Christ was broken. They are not, they might have been preaching, they might have been doing work in the church, but it was a relationship. So I want to encourage you, I didn't grow up in church, I didn't grow up religious, but I have a relationship with Christ. Mm. Yeah. I'm not perfect, right. but have a relationship with Christ. That's right. Because being here every Sunday doesn't make you a Christian. That's right. Just like sitting in your garage doesn't make you a car. Right. You know? So have a relationship with Christ. Because that's what will change you. That's mm. what will uh, give you something better. Mm. And when I was young, that's what I was looking for, something better. Um, I'll just end with this. I married Shane. He kind of got wrangled into it. <laughs> if you want to know the story, come ask me. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, I had my children, and our life was great. And then I was 36, and I found out that my father was not my father. Oh, no. Um, you know, my original father, who my mother divorced. Um, I had grown up trying to go see him and visit him and take my children to see him, still trying to have some relationship with my you know, father. And when I was 36, I found out that you know, the majority of my family had kept it from me, but my mother was pregnant and he married her anyways. Hmm. Put his name on my birth certificate because he was in the hospital when I was born, and that was like in the 60s. And, um, you know, and, every, and my mother was weeping when she told me. She had kept that secret a long time. And I was about 36 years old. But you know what, it was so, I comforted her, which is an odd thing, you know, because it was, it was, I thought it should have been my issue. But, um, and I realized, you know what? I have my heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know? yeah. And he's had his hand on me since, even before I wanted to give him my life. Amen. And, um, and I had a godly husband, and I had beautiful children. And people say, well, doesn't it affect you? A little bit, maybe. But you know what? It wasn't a tragedy for me to find out that I was lied to for a long time and that my dad wasn't my dad uh, because I had Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my, my other encouragement to you is, um, boy, life is easier with Jesus. That's right. You know, things that can knock us down or knock us over. Right. You know, when we first came here, I had three people 
and my family passed away within a short time of each other. Um, some of you may not know that. My father died, my mother-in-law died, and my brother got killed um, on a motorcycle accident. Wow. Boy, that would knock you down. Yes, that's right. And, um, but you know what? Jesus was there the whole time. Mm. He was picking me up. Yes. Every time. And he's still picking Amen. me up, even Amen. when I'm yelling at the lady about my hash brown. <laughs> right? He's still picking me up. So I want to leave you with this scripture. Um, it's good. Psalm 103. This is, this is why I continue. Let me see. There's another one here. This is why I continue my relationship with God, trying to tell others of the kingdom of God and his righteousness, while living victorious and not forgetting his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all my iniquities, yes. even the ones I commit today, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Yes. And my children Amen. said I was being a pig. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and they were right. I don't hold that against them. Who crowns you with loving kindness and yes. compassion. And I want to interrupt you because the Lord just brought something to my mind. Um, there was a point when I was reading the Bible and I read something that God thought was bad. And honestly, Pastor, I grew up not even knowing it was bad. Because all my cousins were okay doing it. My friends were doing it. I didn't know it was bad. And my, and my kids were not the, Chris, actually, I shouldn't say my kids, Chris, um, was not the only one who looked bad at myself. I remember a day reading that scripture and going, oh, I so disappointed God, because I wasn't aware that it was bad. And I remember looking in the mirror and going, boy, mm. you're not so good. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that, because you know what? On our journey, scripture reveals things to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then just acknowledge it and change, and then mm -hmm. it's gone. That's right. Exactly. You know, don't hold on to it. It doesn't bother me now that I did those things. I mean, I wouldn't be up here sharing stuff if it bothered me. I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. It was before Christ. That's mm -hmm. right. And I was a sinner in a sinful world. That's mm -hmm. right. But when you see it in the Word, and it says it's wrong, turn around and go the other way and do yeah. something there else. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And if you can't do it on your own, grab a Christian brother or sister and let him help you do it. Mm -hmm. yep. But don't ignore it. I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. I'm still learning some of those. Compassion and slow to anger. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Can you all say amen? Amen. Yeah. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed my transgressions from me. Amen. 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 And uh, thank you for letting me share that. If you have questions, I don't mind. I'll tell you anything you want to know. <laughs> so I appreciate it. And thank God for my husband, because yes. <laughs> he keeps me in line. All right, my turn. No, I only got 10 minutes. <laughs> well, my testimony is exactly the same as Mindy's anyway, except for the not growing up in church and not Christian parents and not sports being my life. And not getting saved in that team. And not going wild on drugs. That's the cool thing about a testimony. We all have one, and nobody's just the same. That's right. Right? We all have a story to tell about what God has done in our lives. Amen. And, uh, you know, mine is probably almost totally opposite from uh, but, but it's just as it's just as powerful because God still took a dead life and gave new life to it. Yeah. And that's what it did to me. I was raised in a Christian family. 
You know, right in the center of the Bible Belt. Uh, I thank God for my Christian heritage. My parents raised me, you know, godly. And, uh, and I thank God for that. I, I, I pretty much knew God my whole life. You know, slept on pews in church. Uh, baptized at eight years old. Um, didn't get hooked on alcohol and drugs, praise God. Mm -hmm. uh, the only drug problem I had was that my parents drug me to church three, day, three times a week. <laughs> you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. <laughs> but there was an issue with that. Because growing up in church can make you feel safe. Right? Especially growing up in the Bible Belt in church can make you feel very safe. Like, everybody's a Christian. Everybody's good, right? I mean, but that's not the case. See, I grew up in church, but I really never had an experience with God. You know, I was in every service. I heard the messages. I sang the songs. I knew the hymns of the church. That's what we sang growing up. Uh, I was raised on gospel Elvis. You know, good gospel, southern, southern gospel music, and all that kind of stuff. But it never really impacted me. I, I went to children's church, I, I went to youth group, and uh, I did all the Christian things, but it never really changed me. And, I, you know, I look back on it now, and I, I, I call myself so stupid for going that many years as a Christian and, and not being impacted and not making an impact on my world. You know, that's why I encourage young people all the time, you know, don't just sit back and let things happen at your school. Don't just sit back and let things happen in your family. You know, you be the agent of change. That's right. That's right. You be the one that makes a difference. You know, you be the one that sets the standard. Uh, I had opportunity after opportunity to do that, and I did. I played the games. And, uh, you know, grew up in church. But all the while, the devil, you know, kept me under his thumb. I grew up with an acute shyness. I grew up with an inferiority complex. Uh, you know, about halfway through my childhood, I, I got fat and, and, and pimple-faced and, and just began to hate myself. I hated what I looked like. Uh, other kids would make fun of me. Um, I began to hate others in the process. And, and I, I turned my focus inward rather than outward. You know, I'd walk down the hallways of the schools, I remember, uh, not wanting to make eye contact with people because I didn't want to be made fun of, right? I, I felt like if, if people looked at me, then they would probably have something negative to say about me. So I just kept my head down. I uh, got good grades. I was an intelligent person. But, you know, I just, I didn't do any of the fun things that, that I felt like teenagers should have done. I didn't go to my prom. I didn't go to dances. I never even even dated a girl until I was 19 years old. Uh, you know, 19, never been kissed. <laughs> but, I, but I hated myself. And therefore, I couldn't love others either. Because, you know, the Bible says, love your neighbors, you love yourself. Well, right. when you don't love yourself, it's hard to love your neighbor. Right. And that was the problem. After I got out of high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I, I joined the Navy to see the world. <laughs> 